What's up guys, Max here and welcome back to my dungeon. Today I have a very quick video for you since uh, I just got this uh, 11900K uh, today and uh, well, I thought that uh, the best way to start the life of a CPU is to go straight to Sub-Zero. So I load it into my face change cooling and I repeat the test of the video that I published yesterday. So World of Warcraft with the 3090 kick ping and uh, a Gryphon test to see the maximum FPS in comparison with the Ryzen 9 5950X. So keep in mind that this series of video is just to have fun, so it's just pure entertainment. I don't want to uh, to see that you start to compare prices performance because this is a really unrealistic setup. So this video, this series of video is just about to see some crazy stuff, have some fun and that's it. Is not meant to, to prove nothing, it's just to have fun. In my last video, I was able to score 259 as an average with the Ryzen 5950X full enabled, so with the two CCD and the SMT, so all the thread at the core of the CPU, so 259 FPS on average at negative 40 degrees and 5.4 gigahertz. But then I disabled one CCD and I disabled SMT, so I gained a bit more in terms of. Uh, uh, intercore latency. So if I disable one CCD, it becomes like the 5800X, the 5600X, so monolithic design, uh, less latency, and I was able to score 280. So uh, if you want to see a comparison between the two, uh, let's say with this type of cooling, you have to keep in mind 259 as a, a base result for the full uh, CPU and the 280 for the one CCD option. But now let's get started. All right, guys, let's get straight to the point uh, where I show you directly the best run I was able to do. So I'm at 5.8 uh, gigahertz, all core. Uh, well, there's no difference between all core uh, or uh, single boost since, uh, uh, well, at this temperature, it's the same. Uh, World of Warcraft is uh, still a single B thread benchmark, so uh, game, sorry. And uh, well, uh, memory is at uh, 3733 megahertz, gear 1, uh, very tight sub timings. Uh, uh, the ring uh, is at uh, 48, uh, this is the max uh, I can do. And uh, well, let's start the benchmark and I can show you what we are talking about. So, time test 1, same as always. And let's go. So, as you can see now, we have a slight advantage. Well, in theory, we are trying to beat like uh, uh, 258 to 260. That was the 59 feet with the, both the CCD uh, and the uh, SMT on. So, the full uh, CPU at, uh, let's say, default configuration of all the core enabled. When I disabled one CCD, bringing to eight core, and then I disabled SMT, so eight core, eight thread, the score was uh, 30 FPS, uh, 20 FPS higher. So uh, the score to beat, uh, if you want to make it like a full uh, 29, uh, 5950X uh, is like uh, 258, 260. But uh, since uh, we, were, we were pushing for the maximum uh, available for the Zentry is 280. So now, as you can see here, we are a bit short. And uh, the um, 11, 16, 600k uh, was at uh, 256 so here we are scoring just uh, 8 9 fps more so okay we are scoring like 9 fps more and we have 200 megahertz more and uh, 133 megahertz more uh, uh, for the memory so there is something uh, that is not right here so i think this uh, there's a button like somewhere because it is Kind of weird that with 133 megahertz more in the memory and 200 megahertz more in the core and the more cache it doesn't scale quite right so well maybe if we go colder we can improve the score a bit but i'm gonna feel that we are hitting like a bottleneck here somewhere maybe it's in the game and uh, probably you we will see that again as well with the ryzen since if we go down in temperature the the FCLK, so the Infinity Fabric uh, stability, uh, kind of get a hit 
So the performance at a certain level of overclock, they start to go into diminishing return. So uh, this is a fight that I'm really keen to see myself because when you go extreme, uh, everything can happen. So you may find bottleneck along the way. Uh, so it's gonna be pretty interesting. In conclusion, I have to say that I'm a bit disappointed by the performance and the overclocking potential. I was hoping to hit like six gigahertz in a, uh, in a very light uh, uh, application like World of Warcraft. Uh, and uh, well, as well the performance, uh, I was thinking, well, 5.8, uh, so more cache than the, uh, the 11600K, uh, 200 megahertz more, more memory. Uh, I was thinking that maybe we was more close to the Ryzen than the, the, the smaller brother. So yeah, uh, that's it. But uh, well, it's still a great CPU and uh, uh, I'm keen to test it uh, with a proper, uh, let's say, realistic uh, uh, setup, so a custom loop. And uh, well, I will prepare some benchmark uh, with a normal setup. This is just for fun. So my next series of video will be uh, some real world performance of this uh, with real setup. And then I will keep uh, this uh, CPU and the Ryzen 5950X uh, with the Cascade uh, uh, phase change cooling, so negative 100 degrees, uh, and we push more so we can see a bit the scaling with extreme overclocking of the two CPU. And the next step after that is liquid nitrogen on both. So I was hoping to reach like uh, 6.8 or 7 gigahertz on this, uh, and uh, the Ryzen I know that can do 6 gigahertz. So uh, we will benchmark the two and see what happens when we go full extreme. So uh, I saw that uh, you like this kind of video that are a bit crazy, a bit fun. Again, this is just for entertainment purpose, so don't take like a comparison with prices and everything. This is just to have fun between us. And okay, let me know what you think in the comment section. Join my Discord if you want to be in contact with me. And well, like and subscribe and see you in the next one.